Hey everyone, how you doing? It's your boy Shaheener, and I'm sure like many of you that I like to complete the Pokedex when the new Pokemon games come out. And in the early games, there really wasn't much incentive to completing the Pokedex, but as the games went on, they introduced the Shiny Charm, which helps increase odds of finding Shiny Pokemon in the wild. But it would get more and more difficult to get the Shiny Charm because of all the Pokemon that they're adding in. I mean, luckily, most of these Pokemon are available in the game, so it's not all too difficult to get the Shiny Charm. Shortly after I completed my last challenge, I already had an idea for what I wanted to do for the next big challenge. And the thing that I wanted to do was to catch all the Pokemon that were found in the original games they were found in, bring them all the way up to the most current games, which is Scarlet and Violet. I mean, of course, not all the Pokemon are in Scarlet and Violet, so they're just staying in Pokemon Home. And in my head, I was calling this the OG Living Dex, or the original game Living Dex. Later on in the challenge, I did come to find out that this was actually a very distilled version of the Master Dex challenge that was popularized by the YouTuber Birdkeeper Toby. Basically, the Master Dex challenge is getting every Pokemon, including all of their forms. These forms could be differences between male and female, coloring differences like with Alchemy, all of the starter cap Pikachus, and way, way more. My challenge is not as intensive, but I did get a few different forms of Pokemon depending on how I was feeling, I guess? I started to realize through my challenge that there were a number of inconsistencies, but I'll explain those as I get to their respective sections. What the OG Living Dex truly is at the end of the day is to 1. Catch all the Pokemon as they were introduced to the respective games, 2. Catch any new regional forms of Pokemon as they were introduced, and 3. Keep the saves as clean as possible. That means if there's a reasonable way to catch it, then catch it. If it's unobtainable or by an insanely tedious method, then it could be cheesed a little bit. To add more to my challenge, I started with brand new files, so that way I could keep the saves as clean as possible. In my head later on, I was thinking, oh, maybe I could have used some completed files to make this easier, but if I caught the legendaries or the roaming Pokemon already, or any other Pokemon that's one of a kind, then I wouldn't be able to do it for this challenge. I know at this point, if you're trying to play on original hardware, it's not the most financially feasible way of going about it per se, but whatever way you could do it, then I just recommend that. But what I did over here is that for Generation 1, I played through all of red and blue versions. I had them purchased on the eShop for the Nintendo 3DS, so I played on my 3DS XL. For Generation 2, I did the same thing, but just with gold and crystal versions. For Generation 3, I went through Ruby, Sapphire, and Leaf Green versions, and I did those all in my GB operator, which I'm not sponsored by them, I just really like this product. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description. But I just found it very useful, so I'd probably recommend this to really any kind of handheld Game Boy, Game Boy Advance enthusiast. For Generation 4, I played through Diamond, Platinum, a little bit of Pearl, and I played through all Pokemon Ranger. Of course, I just played those on original cartridges on my 3DS XL. For Generation 5, I played through Black 1 and White 1, of course on 3DS. Uh, for X and Y, I played those Gen 6. That was on the 3DS XL as well. Gen 7, I played through Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, and the tiniest possible amount of Pokemon Go. Of course, the Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon were on 3DS. Pokemon Go is on mobile. And for Generation 8 and 9, I basically played through all of Sword, Shield, their respective DLCs, and then Scarlet, Violet, their respective DLCs on the Switch, which is back over there. And I know that Pokemon Legends ZA just got announced pretty recently, but if I were to wait for that game to come out, just in case if there's like any new Pokemon or any forms that are announced, then this video would never come out. So I might as well just work on it now and just release it, because I've been working on this thing for a while. I also streamed the entire challenge on my Twitch channel, which is also linked in the description. That's something that I was actually really proud of doing, because on my last big video, I promised that I was going to stream the entire thing, but I only streamed a fraction of it. So doing this was kind of big for me. Also for the handheld parts on the 3DS XL, I actually got a capture card installed on there, and that's going to be useful for future content as well. I know it kind of set me back a little bit financially, but I've, I've already made the most out of this for sure. But with the intro out of the way, let's get into it.
For the sake of pacing, I'll keep my notes of each generation pretty condensed, but I'll go over the important events of each day. I began the challenge with restarting the game nine times to get each one of the starters to trade them off to a secondary 3DS, since there isn't breeding in Generation 1. To get through the games in a relatively efficient manner, I used speedrunning guides as a reference, and the guide recommended I get a Nidoran male since you could get it into Nidoking very early into the game, and it learns every possible move you need. I also realized that since you could only get one fossil Pokemon per save file, I'd have to play all the way until I could use Surf and restart my save even more times to get one of each of the fossil Pokemon. I asked my Twitch chat what to do, and my buddy Catasys suggested that I use the Missing No glitch, which I agreed to when I get to that point. I also did the Mew glitch to acquire one since it's not obtainable by any other means until Gen 8. The first day had 9 Pokemon acquired. Day 2 was mostly just working through the game, and I only got one Pokemon, which was Lapras. Day 3 got us to Cinnabar Island, so I was able to do the Missing No glitch. I then beat Red's story, then started on Blue version. I'm not really planning on catching too many Pokemon as I go through the main game, but I'll do all the hunting afterwards. This day ended with 7 Pokemon. The next day got me all the way through the Safari Zone, and I ended up catching 3 Pokemon, one of which was Kangaskhan, which is a pretty rare encounter. Typically, my streaming sessions go for about 3 hours at night, but whenever I get chances to stream during the day, I try to go for longer. Day 5 stream went for a while, and with that, I was able to finish the story for Blue. This means I would be able to start the hunt. I totally forgot that during my playthrough, I never actually got the Silph Scope, because at the Pokemon Tower, I used a Pokedoll to get out of the Marowak battle, so I had to go back and do that. At the end of this stream, I had 40 Pokemon caught. The next day led to some pretty decent progress, about 19 Pokemon to be specific. The day after, I realized that there's only one Eevee per file, so I looked into duplication glitches, which one of them required a Pokemon with 102 speed. So I used my Gengar, and after performing the glitch a few times, I had multiple Eevees to turn into their respective evolutions. The rest of today was focused on the Safari Zone, aka the bane of my existence. The Pokemon I needed were the most elusive, and since Pokemon could flee, catching some of them were absolute torture. I ended the day with 6 caught. The next stream started with a focus on Tauros, and they'd all flee after one turn. God damn it! One turn! One turn! After nearly two hours, I finally got one. The next struggle was trying to catch Graveler, which are a 5% encounter, and would use self-destruct. I managed to catch one, but finding another was proving to be difficult, so I just got a Geodude and evolved it. This day had 16 acquisitions, one of which was Mewtwo, which I used my Master Ball on. I finished up most of the normal encounters on Blue, so I decided to shift my focus back to Red, where I spent nearly all my time that day looking for a Scyther in the Safari Zone. At the end of this day, I had 20 more Pokémon acquired, including the legendary bird Zapdos. Yes! Yeah! Let's go! We got it! As I was starting to reach the end of my challenge in Generation 1, it started to dawn upon me that if I wanted to get the reward, I would have to trade all the Pokémon over to one system because I was playing on two different versions on one console. So that means that I would have to trade all the Pokémon from one game over to my secondary 3DS, switch to the other game, and then trade them over to that one. And I know you really don't need to do that, I just wanted to, but it also made this even more time consuming, because I would have to catch a bunch of throwaway Pokemon that I called Trade Fodder. The next stream focused on catching all the Trade Fodder, and after all that was done, I did a few more captures that I needed. I then got to the point that I dreaded the most, acquiring Porygon. In blue version, you need 6,500 coins to acquire it from Celadon's Game Corner, which is the easier option as opposed to the 9,999 coins you need in red version. I looked up some guides, but honestly, the easiest way I found was just to beat the Elite Four multiple times and use the earnings to buy the coins. Each run would net me around 30,000, and it would cost about 1,000 for 50 coins, which means I had to do this five times over to get the required amount. Once this was done, I finally had that Porygon. I then set my focus to getting all of my Pokémon to blue version, 
but doing the trading was absolutely miserable, primarily due to the box system. I feel like the box system in Gen 1 and 2 are not talked about as much for how absolutely miserable they are. First, the boxes only hold 20 Pokemon, and it's not a drag and drop situation like everything after them. You would have to deposit or withdraw your Pokemon one by one, and if you need to switch to another box, you would have to save every time you switch the box, even to just look at them. There's no list that shows what's in each box, so you just have to hope that you pick the right box or have a list written somewhere. I finished the day with three more entries, the other two being the legendary birds Articuno and Moltres. The next day focused on item-based evolutions and level grinding at the Pokemon League. This gave me 19 more entries. Day 12 brought me to working on Dratini, which takes forever to level up on top of having a high level requirement to evolve. I found a thread on Reddit that suggested taking two Pokemon and using an experience all until Dratini is strong enough to battle on its own. This was actually a lot slower for me, so I circumvented it and went back to normal battling with my strong Pokemon. The next day granted me one Dragonair, but I needed the other to evolve into Dragonite, which wouldn't be until level 55. Day 14 primarily focused on more Elite 4 playthroughs, but Dratini was barely getting experience. My friend Bono suggested that I find the remaining rare candies in the game to help with the process. I ended up with 4, but when I was getting them, I only needed 5 levels altogether. I finished up the last level at the Cerulean Cave and fed it candies until it evolved into Dragonite. This was the last Pokemon that I needed for Generation 1, and safe to say, I was ready to move forward. I mean, this game is really cool to look back at for nostalgia purposes, especially because it laid the groundwork for the whole franchise. But there's so many mechanics in this game that are just frustrating to deal with, and it makes this game entirely a slog. So I only recommend going back to this if you're just going to play casually, or if you really care about catching them all, then I guess go for it. The only payoff in Generation 1, though, is just getting the diploma, and that's really it. Before I got into Generation 2, I was looking into speedrunning tactics to help me get through the games a bit quicker, because of course in Generation 2 you have to go through both Johto and Kanto, but if I'm also playing Gold and Crystal versions, that means I'm playing through essentially four full games there. And also, in that downtime, I actually added custom firmware to my new Nintendo 3DS XL, just because that way I could extract the save file, throw it onto my new 2DS XL, and it'd just be easier to trade because I don't want to have to catch everything twice over for trade fodder, it was just really just tedious. Luckily with Gen 2, the breeding mechanic was introduced, so I don't have to start the game over multiple times for the starters. I started by playing Gold version and picked Chikorita as my starter. I also did an exploit to get Cyndaquil to save myself some time. Even though I was following a speedrunning guide, I of course took my own liberties on Pokemon they said not to catch, such as Sudowoodo and the Red Gyarados. My buddy Bono suggested that I do the shiny Ditto glitch, so that way I could try to hatch a shiny Cyndaquil, since its evolution, Quilava, is my favorite Gen 2 Pokemon. I told him I would, but I was required to wait 24 real hours after meeting Bill to allow the time capsule to be activated. The first day ended with 5 new acquisitions. I started the next day by trying out the shiny Ditto exploit, and shockingly enough, it worked. Side tangent, but can we just appreciate how much effort they put into trading on the 3DS Virtual Console titles. I mean, you're emulating two different systems here, the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color, and you're allowing them to communicate with each other wirelessly when they previously needed link cables. I mean, it just goes to show that if they put the resources into it and that they care, Game Freak could really do a lot for just Pokemon in general. Anyways, to summarize the exploit, I sent my shiny Gyarados to blue version, and use the move Mimic to copy the move Transform from Wild Ditto, then use Transform against that Ditto and caught it. Once I sent that Ditto over to Gold, it was automatically shiny. I used this to breed with my Quilava, which in Gen 2 is a 1 in 64 chance for it to be shiny rather than the standard 1 in 8192. I didn't have any luck finding it this day, so I continued my playthrough all the way through defeating Claire at Blackthorn. I ended this day with two new entries. I started the next day with some more egg hunting, but to no avail. I continued my playthrough of gold until I beat the game, but I didn't have any new Pokemon that day. The next also had no luck on eggs, but I then started my playthrough of crystal version. 
I got to Goldenrod City before I called it a day. The following day also had no shiny Cyndaquils, but I was able to get through the end of Johto in Crystal version. The day after that got me through the end of the game for Crystal, now I can finally start the hunt. My plan to make things easier for weakening Pokemon was to catch a Scyther from National Park so I could teach it False Swipe. I went through the Elite Four with it, so that way it could be leveled up, and I also evolved it to Scizor with a Metal Coat. Also, I just found this out in Gen Region 2, but basic Pokemon can flee, apparently. I found this out because I was trying to catch a Quagsire, and it would just flee at random occasions. It made this really, really annoying. I guess that what was going on is that they were trying to program Pokemon that were to be caught easier with a fastball, but it wasn't programmed correctly, so now there's just a handful of Pokemon that just flee whenever they feel like. So I had to go catch a Haunter and use Mean Look on it, and... <sighs> what a frustrating process, I swear. After that, my next issue was trying to find Yanma, which was a 1% encounter in one location, but for some reason, RNGesus was not on my side that day. It took over an hour to find it, but after that it was smooth sailing. I finished the day with 33 new Pokemon. I've been starting each day with doing at least a half hour of egg hatching, but no luck so far. I set my focus at the beginning of my hunting, on fishing, and once that was done, I went over to Mount Silver to get a few Pokemon. After that, I smashed my Pokemon's head on some trees to find a monkey and a pinecone. To finish the day, I tried my hand at the bug catching contest to win a sunstone. This day brought me 13 new captures. I did another bug catching contest the day after for another sunstone, and then went to go catch Suicune. It was stubborn, so I had to reset a couple times to catch it. I tried my hand at finding the roaming legendaries Entei and Raikou, but had no luck. The day ended with two acquisitions. I tried my hand the next time and found Raikou. After that, I went to get Celebi, which is actually available in Crystal's virtual console. Those were the only acquisitions I had today, since my buddies wanted to do the Mewtwo Terror Raid that was happening that weekend. The following day of Gen 2 didn't start off with egg hatching, since I wanted to get right back into catching Pokemon. I caught the remaining legendaries and all the forms of unknown, and this was actually the first time I've seen all of the secret rooms. One of the rooms required a water stone, so I had to get one by battling Fisherman Tully, get his number, and reset the daylight saving time for him to call me and possibly have one. This took about an hour, but I was finally able to get it. Getting all the unknown forms was tedious, since they're all in one room, and since there's 26 forms, the odds of each one is pretty low. About 3.9% for most of them, but Unknown Z is a 2.3% encounter. This day got us 5 new Pokemon, which included the legendaries Entei, Lugia, and Ho-Oh. The next session was a spontaneous late night thing, where I just had the urge to do something. In this session, I traded some Pokemon over from Blue version and bred them down to get all of the baby Pokemon. All in all, there were 6 Pokemon acquired that night. So the next stream I did actually ended up being the longest stream I've ever done, which was like a 12 hour stream, and honestly it was just kind of by accident, so... Yeah, I just mainly worked on the happiness evolutions, which is such an arduous process, it is so just annoying and tedious. Uh, working on Chansey's was probably the worst one I would say out of all of them. And after I did that, I caught all the Pokemon that were exclusive to gold. Then I bred down the Pokemon of Crystal that couldn't be caught in the wild, like starters and things like that. So this stream overall brought me in 29 new Pokemon, but there's still two left that he needed to get, Hitmontop and Tyranitar. Even though there were only two Pokemon left in the Gen 2 Pokedex, I still had quite a bit of work ahead of me. The stream started with acquiring Hitmontop, which didn't take much time. After that, I took the Larvitar I had to the Elite Four to level it up, then pumped it full of rare candies to evolve it into the final Johto Pokemon I needed, Tyranitar. I transferred all of the Pokemon I had from Gold to Crystal, which was only 12. But after that, I had a major task to complete, which was to catch a bunch of trade fodder and bring all the Pokemon from Blue version to Crystal. I got about halfway through on this session before I started to back up the next day. At this point, I made the conscious decision of using Pige Hex to organize my boxes for Generation 2, because Generation 1 and 2's box system is probably the worst thing about those two games, especially if you are going to be catching them all. It is such a dumpster fire, and I really didn't want to deal with that again, especially with dealing with over 250 Pokemon. And in terms of trade fodder that I needed, I caught 66 Pokemon, 
And with that, trading them over and everything, that took about four and a half hours. In the middle of this, I realized that if you're trading Pokemon over with a Poke Transporter and they evolve by trade, they will evolve. I didn't know that. I thought they would just stay the same form. So I didn't have Graveler in Gen 2. I just went over and caught another one over there. But in terms of having a Gen 1 Graveler, I decided that I would just catch one later on and send it over with Poke Transporter. But with all of that out of the way, Generation 2 is now over. I got a diploma for it. So onwards to Gen 3. As I mentioned earlier, I was using a GB operator to play my Generation 3 games on my computer. And what this is, is that it's a USB based device and you could rip save files from it. You could write save files onto it and it has MGBA, which is an emulator integrated with the software for it. So that way you could play your games on your computer for a Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. I think even the Game Boy Camera works still from what I've seen. But anyways, I thought it was just really cool. It's super useful, so it's only like 50 bucks. But anyways, in terms of Generation 3, I just started the first night by laying out the groundwork and everything. But then I got a real head start the next day. For the first part of this, I actually recorded with my Game Boy player on my GameCube, so that way I could trade the starters from one game to the other. Later on in the day, I started on Ruby version with Mudkip as my starter, and in that one session, I made my way all the way through to the Hoenn League. I set up my GameCube with the Pokemon Coliseum bonus disc to get Jirachi. The speedrunning guide I've been using was mainly intended for Sapphire, which has been good except for right at the end. There's a heavy reliance on Kyogre once you get it, and Groudon just doesn't cut it. For the rest of the stream, I ended up catching the Reggie Trio. After this 8 hour session, I had 15 more Pokemon to add to my collection. I started Sapphire on the next stream and made my way to Verdanturf Town before I called it a night without catching anything new. My plan currently is to defeat the Elite Four on Sapphire with Kyogre, then trade it over to Ruby to finish the job. The next day brought me through the Elite Four with very little effort. I then brought Kyogre over to Ruby to complete the Elite Four there. Kyogre was my only acquisition that day, but the next session will begin. The Hunt. The easiest Pokemon to get False Swipe on would be Ninkata, so I caught one and evolved it to both Ninjask and Shedinja. I then went for the roaming legendary Latios, which I thought would take a long time, but I literally found it in two hops. Two hops this time! Literally two seconds? Are you kidding? What the f***? <laughs> this is instantly, I wasn't even thinking about it. I definitely wanted to use my Master Ball here since I don't want to have to search for it again. After that, I went to find another Pokemon I thought would take forever, Feebaz. Luckily, it didn't take much time at all, and afterwards I went for some others. For Skitty, I did an in-game trade for Pikachu instead of doing the 2% encounter. I finished up this session with 25 captures. The next led to some good progress. I guess I was super lucky, but there happened to be a mass outbreak of Surskit, which is typically a 1% encounter, so I was able to get it pretty easily. At the end of the day, I had 28 more to add to my roster. I then continued doing more captures and ran into another situation, acquiring Snowrun. To get it, the Shoal Cave has to be at a low tide, but since I stream at night, it's always at high tide, so I'll have to go for it later. The next issue was that I just can't seem to find Lairon, and when I did find one, it would use Roar to escape. This took way too long to find one, and at the end of the session I managed to have 10 more Pokemon. At this point, I was actually gone from stream for a week, mainly for Aftershock Festival, but also for a couple things too. But when I got back, I was working on doing some Elite Four battling, so that way I could make some money to get Pokeballs to catch the remaining Pokemon I needed in Ruby version. I wasn't feeling all that well that day, so I left the stream pretty early, we only got four acquisitions that night as well, and one of them being the legendary Pokemon, Rayquaza. The next stream that I did was focusing more on Sapphire's hunting, and so what I did was I caught all the Pokemon that I needed to that were exclusive in Sapphire and brought them over to Ruby version. Luckily, I was streaming during the day, so I was actually able to get Snowrun finally. But with all of the exclusives in Sapphire caught, I was now able to start my playthrough in Leaf Green version. So with Leaf Green version, there were only three Pokemon that I needed in this whole game, which two of them are unknown forms, exclamation mark and question mark. 
Those Pokemon were actually available in the Sevi Islands once you beat the game, but the last Pokemon we need is Deoxys, which technically isn't available by legitimate means, but there are ways of going about it nowadays that is just amazing to me. There was a game preservationist named Deoxys with a Z that was able to procure a copy of the Aurora Ticket distribution, which is used to give you the Aurora Ticket, put it onto your game, and find Deoxys that way. And it's just amazing on what game preservationists could do to just keep something as niche as this alive. But to show how that really works, I'll get into that later on once we get to that part. Another reason why I wanted to play Leaf Green would be to get Ditto so I could use it for breeding. I followed another speedrunning guide and got all the way to Fuchsia City. I ran away from one of the Snorlaxes and then remembered that I had planned to catch one so I could bring it to Gen 4 to make getting Munchlax super easy. I finished this day with 12 new Pokemon, one of which was the roaming Pokemon Latias. This one took a bit longer than Latios. I started the next session in hopes that I'd be able to go straight to the Sevi Islands, but it turns out you need the National Dex to get to the islands past the third one. The National Dex requires 60 Pokemon caught, but since I only had 8 Pokemon on Leaf Green, I spent most of the stream catching Pokemon after I beat the Elite Four. After a few more hours and going through various storylines, I was able to get the unknowns that I needed at around 1am that morning. The next day, I finished up the rest of the Sevi Islands plot, so that way I could trade with Ruby and Sapphire. Since there were still Pokemon I had on Sapphire, I had to get some trade fodder on Ruby to bring them over. This stream ended with four more acquisitions. While I was doing this, I had a new user enter my chat whose username was Lord Ignis, and they mentioned to me that they were working on a challenge on Yellow Version Virtual Console and bringing those Pokemon over to home. And when I was asking them about it, they said what we were doing is basically a Master Dex challenge. And up until that point, I never heard that term before. I thought what I was doing was a totally original idea. I tried calling my titles on my stream Big Project 2 because I didn't want anybody to take my idea if there's anybody even watching it. And when I saw that message, it kind of deflated my ego a little bit because I thought what I was doing was totally original. But then once they were going to more detail about like how there's a whole community for it and there's like a big YouTuber that's made videos about it and stuff, I was like, sweet, there's a community for this. There's people that are interested, and so maybe I could get some help with it. Because when I was making this whole thing and prepping my challenge, I had no reference point. I was searching for something similar to what I'm doing now, and I couldn't find any results. But I guess this existed, I just didn't know what to search for. <laughs> After the stream was done, I sent a message to that Discord server asking if what I was doing was considered a Master Dex challenge. Because I wasn't going to as much depth and detail as they were all going into in terms of like all the alchemy forms or all the this and that I just wasn't going as in depth and I got a response back saying that what I was doing was still considered a master dex challenge because everybody has their own stipulations for it so that was a bit reassuring another person said that what I was doing was kind of in a way like an origin dex so I don't really know what to call this, so just for the sake of exposure and whatnot, I'm just going to say it's a Master Dex challenge, but in my head it's really still an OG Living Dex. I did some research on what would be the best way to level grind in Gen 3, and I found that it would be to battle the TV reporters Ty and Gabby endlessly throughout Hoenn. I tried battling the Elite Four to see if it'd be better, and it really wasn't. This day granted me 20 more Pokémon. The grind was pretty boring and mind-numbing, especially for Pokémon that required more experience. For three-stage evolutions, I've always assumed that an evolved Pokémon would require more experience. But Lord Ignis once again destroyed my reality by telling me it's always been based on the experience group it's in. This day had six more to add to the list. The next day was even more level grinding, but I did take a break to evolve Feebas into Milotic. After that, I got back to level grinding, and since I've done 255 battles against Ty and Gabby, they've stopped moving locations, which will save a lot more time. This day had 7 more additions. The next session was level grinding the last two Pokémon I needed other than Deoxys, Salamence, and Metagross. Unfortunately, the wireless adapter I needed was in transit, so I needed to wait a few days before I acquired Deoxys. Once it came in, I was able to begin the process to get them. To make this work, you need two Game Boy Advances, two wireless adapters, and then of course you'll need your game, 
and then you'll need a flash cart so that way you could load the ROM for the Aurora ticket onto it. And so once you have that all loaded up, then it'll show that you're sending over the Aurora ticket on here. You'll send that over to your next system and that way now you have the Aurora ticket. You go to Birth Island and you catch Deoxys. And it took so long to catch Deoxys. It was being so stubborn that it took me hours to catch it. I know I could have used a Master Ball, but I just wanted to catch it with a Pokeball. But once I finally caught it a couple hours later, then Gen 3 was all done and that capture was the only one that day, which is also one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Now that Gen 3 is done, all I need to do is organize the boxes. Luckily, Game Freak used their heads for once and made the box system actually usable, so organizing only took like 20 minutes. Unfortunately, since there's no way to transfer the Pokemon from Gen 2 to Gen 3, I wasn't able to get the diploma for Ruby and Sapphire, but Gen 3 is now complete. Now we're finally on Generation 4, and I feel like that this is the generation where I put in the most effort in terms of the amount of games that I played and things like that. Because I had to play through all of Diamond Version and Platinum, and I played through a good chunk of Pearl, but there was actually one Pokemon available in Ranger, which I had never played before, and this Pokemon wouldn't be available again normally until Pokemon Legends Arceus. The first game that I started with was actually Pearl Version, I mentioned earlier that I played a good chunk of Pearl, but I didn't play all of it. For some reason, they decided not to add the Glammeow line to Platinum, so the furthest I needed to get in Pearl was just to get two of them. I finished up the first day by getting to the Underground, where I searched for fossils. I only got two Pokemon that day, however, which were Infernape and Shieldon. The latter of which was exclusive to Pearl at the time, so I might as well get it there. Since I was at the route where Chansey was found, I gave it a shot to look for a Lucky Egg which is a 5% probability to find Chansey, and only 5% of those have it. Somehow, I was graced with it on the very first one. I made my way to Route 218 to get Glammeow, and I was already done with Pearl. I then started Diamond with Turtwig, so I could send it to Pearl, and then I restarted with Chimchar, since that's what the guide suggested. I only had two acquisitions that day, but I'm not counting Chimchar here because it was going to evolve into another Infernape. The next day wasn't that long of a stream as I got through the second gym before calling it a night, but I did get Kranidos, which was the other fossil exclusive. After that, I got all the way through the end of Diamond on the next session, where I also caught the legendary Dialga. Since I was done with playing Diamond's story, the next stream was for Platinum. I did this playthrough with my favorite starter of Gen 4, Piplup. Once I got to the Orberg Mines, I found my first random shiny the challenge, a Geodude I named Derek after Derek Zoolander. But why oh male models? What the f Oh my god! <laughs> what the hell? Later on, I caught a chat and showcased how the move Chatter worked with the microphone. My name is Deb. <laughs> it's so bad! I ended this session with three captures as I neared the drama with the Lake Guardians. I thought I had purchased a bunch of Ultra Balls earlier so I could use them for Giratina, but I guess I misremembered. So by the time I got to them, I only had three Ultra Balls, three Pokeballs, and one Timer Ball. After over 10 resets, I finally got it. This was the only capture today, but I got through all eight gyms. I finished up the rest of the game on the next session, but I still needed to get the National decks. Luckily in this game, all you need to do is just encounter the Pokemon instead of catching them all. So I got through almost all of it, but with four remaining, I decided to leave it for next time. The last four Pokedex entries I needed were Rotom and the Lake Trio, which weren't hard to get at all. It then dawned on me that since the 3DS doesn't have a GBA slot, I would have to use my DS Lite and record with my webcam to show the Pal Park transfers. I transferred the first six Pokemon from Ruby, and when I went to transfer the next six, the game said I had to wait 24 hours before going again. I was under the impression that Platinum got rid of the 24 hour transfer limit, but I guess that's only for Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I found an exploit online that allows me to circumvent the limit if I had two GBA games. So I did a few more transfers before my DS Lite's battery was about to die. The four Pokemon I mentioned earlier were the only captures I had this session. The next session was one of the most boring ones I did this entire challenge, since it was all dedicated to transferring via the Pal Park, 
but I got it done after about three hours. After that, I acquired all the evolutionary items I needed in Platinum. Then I went back to Diamond briefly to get the four remaining Pokémon I needed there. After that, I went for a few more, so this stream brought in 12 new Pokémon altogether. On the next session, I had some difficulty finding a couple Pokémon, so I'll probably have to get back to those later. I slathered some trees with honey so I could look for them in tomorrow's session. I then shifted my focus to the Great Marsh, but there's still a few left that I needed there. There were 15 Pokémon caught this session. I caught nearly all the remaining Pokémon, but Apom was still one that eluded me, since it was another Honey Tree encounter. Getting Spirit Tomb was also pretty tedious, since I had to do 32 interactions in the Underground, but luckily I had two other DSs, and just had my Diamond and Pearl files loaded up, so it'd be a bit quicker. I had 8 captures this session, which included the legendaries Palkia, Heatran, and Regigigas. In hindsight, I should have gotten male and female forms of Hippopotas and Hippowdon, since they look noticeably different, but I didn't think about it this time. My bad. Thankfully, Apom showed up in the honey trees next time I checked. I forgot to get Misdreavus and Pearl, so I had to go back and get that. Afterwards, I mainly focused on hatching eggs. I also found out that Rotom's other forms were first available in Platinum, but only if you had the secret key mystery gift item, but we'll address that later. The last thing I attempted to look for was female Combi, but this day was not successful. There were seven acquisitions this session, one of which was Munchlax. I didn't want to bother with the honey trees from Munchlax, since I knew it'd take forever, so that's why I got Snorlax from Leaf Green. On the next session, I thankfully found female Combi right away, so I could continue. I did some trade evolutions and level grinding, but I hit a roadblock with Burmy of all things. I was under the impression that Wormadam could change forms the same way that Burmy does, so I evolved all the female Burmy I had to plant form, thinking I'd deal with it later. I guess it stays in whatever form it evolves into, so I had to rehatch a bunch more eggs and regrind to get to where I was before. Overall, there were 15 more to add to this list. The level grind was going well so far, but then I got to Baneri, which evolved by friendship. For reasons unknown, Game Freak decided to give Baneri a base friendship of 0, while others are typically around 70. 220 is needed to evolve. The fact that they set Baneri at the same happiness as the big legendaries like Mewtwo is beyond me. I tried riding the bicycle over many laps, but it seemed to do nothing. I then decided to go to the Massage Lady and reset the time so I could repeat the process multiple times. I finally got Baneri to the point of evolving by the end of the session. Because of this, there were only four new Pokémon. I did some more level grinding the next day, but it wasn't anything to write home about. This brought me seven more. In between my play sessions, I decided to test out the Wi-Fi spoof servers to see how it works to get the mystery gift items, and sure enough, it actually worked pretty well. The only issue that I had is that since they uploaded everything at once, they had to cycle through all the mystery gifts just to get the one that you want. So sometimes you get really lucky, other times you're just repeating the same gift over and over and over again. But I got all the items I needed, I got all the Pokemon I needed. The only thing that I got extra was getting the Azure Flu, which technically wasn't available to us in Generation 4, that they just kind of, they made the item and they made the Hall of Origin for Arceus, but they never actually released it, which is kind of stupid? But I talked with my friend Bono about it, and he said that it was cool that I use it, so that's the only approval I need. <laughs> uh, this session ended up being the last one I needed for Platinum, which had nine Pokémon altogether. There were, however, still two more Pokémon that I needed to catch for Generation 4, which were Fioni and Manaphy. And like I mentioned very early into the video, I did have to play through all of Pokémon Ranger, and basically what that was about is that once you complete the game, you have access to the post-game missions, and one of them actually allows you to send over a Manaphy egg from Ranger to your Generation 4 game, so you can get it there, then you bring it down to get Fioni, which is really cool. But what's ridiculous about it is that once that's been redeemed once, that cartridge is completely useless at that point, is that you can't get the Manaphy egg over and over again. Even if you start a new game and you beat the game, you can't get the Manaphy egg another time. So, what I would probably recommend if you are doing this, and you buy a used cartridge of Ranger, load it up to a 3DS that has custom firmware, and just completely wipe the save file from it. Wipe all the data from it, except for obviously the ROM itself, 
and you should be good to go. That's what I did, and it worked perfectly for me. I started the game for a bit on the first night, but I didn't get too far. The next day got me through mission 6, and since there are 10 missions overall, it shouldn't take too long to get to the end of the game. The next day ended up being the end of Pokemon Ranger, but it was not an easy win. The final boss fight was ridiculous, and I definitely lost my cool in some parts, especially since there were not that many save points at all. No! God f***ing it! Mm. No! Once all that was over, I was given access to Ranger Net to do the Manaphy Egg mission. After I completed it, I brought the egg over to Platinum. Hatching the Manaphy Egg was super quick, and the Fioni Egg took a little bit longer, but once it did, my Gen 4 Pokedex was complete. Again, with this one, since I don't have my Gen 1 and Gen 2 Pokemon with me, I did not get the diploma for completing the Pokedex. Generation 5 was started in the exact same way as Gen 4, so I might as well just get into it. As I did with other games, I started by obtaining the starters and bringing them over to another game for safekeeping. The only problem I had with this game is that for some silly reason, Game Freak decided that you could only trade after the first gym and after the first Team Plasma battle. The whole process took about 4 hours before I could truly start. Today I only had one acquisition. I decided to start with white version first, and in the middle of my playthrough I decided to just knock out the mystery gift Pokemon I needed. These were Pokemon that are not available in the games unless you were there at the time, which I was. These Pokemon I acquired were Keldeo, Meloetta, Genesect, but I also got the Liberty Pass for Victini. For Genesect, the distribution didn't work in White 1, so I had to load up my copy of White 2 to get it, then transfer it over. This session allotted me 6 Pokemon. So at this point, I took a break from the project for a little while, so that way I could work on the new DLC that just released for Scarlet and Violet, the Indigo Disc. But when I got back, honestly, like, the streams weren't super interesting, it was just trying to get through the game. And then I finished up the game, caught Zekrom, and I then started on Black Version. And at that point, on my first session of playing Black Version, I got to Castelia City before I just called it there. I finished up the story in the first half of today's session, so now I could at least prepare for the hunt. I actually started with the Liberty Garden quest to get Victini, which was being stubborn as hell. I had to pause my play session till later on that day, but I ended up catching Victini then. After that, I transferred all the Pokemon I had from Gen 3 and 4, which took about an hour and a half. From there, I visited the Abyssal Ruins in Undela Town to get the Relic items and sell them to have money for Pokeballs. At this point, I had been going at it for 3 hours in this session, and since I stream at night, it was getting pretty late. So I did a little bit of the hunt. By the end of the day, I had 19 more to add to my collection, which included the legendaries Tornadus and Reshiram. The next session led to some good progress, including acquiring my favorite Pokémon of all time, Darmanitan. I finished up this session with 33 new Pokémon. After that, I went and made just as much progress as the last one, but I got to where I needed to catch all the seasonal forms of Deerling and Sawsbuck. Luckily, just changing the month in the system settings worked just fine. I also caught my least favorite Pokemon of all time here as well, Stunfisk. Disgusting! There were 32 more Pokemon caught today. For the past couple of sessions, I was mulling over what I was going to do about the Zorua slash Zoroark situation, and I just finally decided that I was going to do the Mystery Gift event for Selby and Generation 4, and that way I could just transfer it over to Generation 5 with the Relocator. That way I could trigger the event to get Zarwa. I don't know why they only allow Zarwa and Zarwark to be only available by those means on Black 1 and White 1, but that's how it is. I then went after the legendaries I needed in Black version, which were the Swords of Justice and Kyurem. I went back to white version to get the roaming Pokemon Thunderous, then sent it back to black version so I could unlock Landorus' shrine to catch it. This session gave me 14 more Pokemon altogether. From here, I got the evolutionary stones needed for the rest of this generation. After that, I did a bunch of level grinding with Wild Audino and various trainers in the stadiums in Nimbasa City. I then took a detour to find Leovanny, which is a 5% encounter in Rustling Grass on Route 6. Personally, I'd much rather do this than deal with another friendship evolution, but I had no luck this session. I did end the day, however, with 17 more Pokemon to add. 
The next session was my last stream for 2023, and I kicked it off with finally getting Lee Vanny. Chief and port over. Oh, yes! That's it! That's it! Finally! We found it! Yes! Thank God! I then continued the level grind, which is a little more arduous this chapter because there are a number of Pokemon with very high level requirements to evolve. Luckily, I found that battling the trainers in the stadium and going against Wild Audino proved to be the most efficient way of going about it. I ended this session with 12 more additions. The next day, I did more level grinding, but shortly thereafter, I got to the Pokemon with the highest level requirement for evolution in the entire franchise, the Dino line. Dino evolved into Zwilus at level 50, then to Hydreigon at level 64. I decided for this one that I would go against the Elite Four. Luckily, I only needed to do this twice over, and since I had 8 rare candies, I got to Hydreigon quite easily. This day had 9 more captures. The next session actually ended up being my last one for Gen 5 officially. All I needed to do was breed down some Pokemon, then go through evolving my Woobat with friendship, which was way easier than I thought it was going to be. This last session got me the last 12 Pokemon I needed. So with this chapter now over, I now had to deal with bringing everything over from my cartridges and my save files on the virtual console to Pokemon Bank. So how I went about this is by the Poke Transporter, of course, but it only recognizes the first box. So especially with the Gen 1 games and Gen 2 games, I would have to basically send a box over, then go back in, and just take all those Pokemon and add it back into Box 1. And as I mentioned before, the box system in Generation 1 and 2 are unusable to say the least. So I just went more a little bit off the beaten path, let's say. What I did here is that I sent over the first box to Bank, I backed up my save file for the Virtual Console games with Checkpoint, uploaded that save file to my computer, and moved the Pokemon over with PK Hex. Then I took that save file, injected it back on with Checkpoint, and then I just finally brought those ones back over to Transporter. Just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. This took quite a while, to say the least. I also remembered before I finished up that session to bring over the Pokemon that accidentally evolved when I sent them to Generation 2. So that was Kadabra, Graveler, Machoke, Haunter. And after a few hours of working and all of that, I decided to call it so that way I could focus on Gen 3 and Gen 5 the next day. So the next day, I focused on transferring Pokemon from Generations 3 to Generation 5 over to Bank. And luckily, they used their heads for these games and they made the box system usable. They also allowed 30 Pokemon per box rather than 20, so that just made life so much easier. But with all of this finally being taken care of, I can finally get into Generation 6. This generation started out pretty much the same as the others. I started out with Fennekin, uploaded it to Bank, and restarted my copy of Y but with Chespin. These were the only two Pokemon I got on this day, since the guide I used recommended getting a Farfetch'd as soon as possible. The next day got me through to the fourth gym, but I was then told to catch a Halucha, which would carry me for quite a while longer. My only other acquisition that day was the fossil Pokemon Tyrant. After that, I got to Dendamil, but there were no new captures. On the following day, I had the realization as I was getting closer to the end of the game that I wouldn't need to complete the story for both games to get all the Pokemon since there are no post-game exclusives in Y version. I caught the exclusives in that game, and that was it for Y version. I then started X version right after that and got to Shalur City before I called it. There were 7 new Pokemon acquired that day, which included the legendary Eveltal. The next day got me all the way through X's campaign. I attempted to do everything with my Lucario, but I ran out of ethers by the time I got to the Elite Four, so I had to rely on my stronger Pokemon for my older games. The only Pokemon I got this day was Xerneas, but up next was... The Hunt. While I was doing my hunt, I forgot to save and accidentally turned off the game, which was luckily only about three Pokemon that I lost, so it could have been worse, I guess. At first I was kind of bummed since one of the Pokemon I lost was a Dedenne, and that's a 5% encounter. But I was then reminded by my friend Bono that if I had a Pokemon with the ability Static leading on my team, it'll actually bring out more Electric types, so I found one right away. Later on, I dealt with one of the most annoying encounters of this generation, a male Litleo. I was initially trying to find a higher leveled one, so I didn't have to level grind as much. 
So it was a 10% encounter, but 12.5% of those would be male. I searched for about half an hour, but I had no luck. I then cut my losses and went for the area with a lower leveled one, but with a higher encounter rate, which brought it to 20% encounters. I had no luck at first, but then got reminded that the Cute Charm ability is more likely to bring out Pokemon of the opposite sex. I found it immediately after that. Once I had all that done, I realized that I couldn't transfer my Ditto over since a virtual console could only transfer the Gen 7, so I had to catch another one. This session ended with 26 Pokemon caught, including the legendary Zygarde. The next day started with trade evolutions, of which there were only four. After that, I went and did some egg breeding, but for some reason my Froakie wasn't giving eggs at first. In the meantime, I evolved my Eevee into Sylveon with Pokemon Ami, which was way quicker now than when I did that for the first time when it came out. I still remember laying in my bed, making weird faces at my 3DS for an hour, since that's how I thought you were supposed to raise happiness. And right after that, Froakie was able to give me some eggs. And while I was able to move on, I didn't know where to level grind. I saw online that Restaurant Lo Wow in Lumio City was the place to go about it, but my stupid brain couldn't comprehend how it worked at first. I then went to the Battle Chateau, but that didn't work out since it was super slow. I then actually attempted the restaurant and it worked perfect. I set up my lead with an amulet coin to maximize funds along with equipping my other Pokemon with lucky eggs on top of having the experience O power. Once I was down to only a couple of Pokemon that needed only a few extra levels, I just went to the Victory Road to finish up the grind. And after that, I found the remaining evolutionary stones I needed, adding 31 more Pokemon to my collection. This would be the part where I would say that I am done with Generation 6, but there were three Pokemon that I was not able to acquire whatsoever in these games. Those were of course the mythical Pokemon Deancey, Hoopa, and Volcanion. And so these were only available through distribution events and in-person locations back when the games were current. Luckily, I was actually there for those, so I still have my distribution cards for Volcanion and Deancey. Uh, Hoopa, that was only available at McDonald's of all things, and they didn't have a card, you just went in and you sign on to, I think, Nintendo Network, and then you're able to get it that way. So I did have Hoopa as well from there. So basically what I did is I just spoofed them back in with PK Hex. So I'm done with Gen 6 too now. I know some people might not like that I'm spoofing in these Pokemon, but not really much I could do there. So, on to Generation 7. Luckily, Generation 6 and Generation 7 don't have too many Pokemon in between their games, so completing the Pokedexes were pretty easy. And I was planning on playing through the Sun and Moon demo to get the Greninja with the Battle Bond ability, but when you transfer that one over to Scarlet and Violet, it keeps the ability, but its physical appearance doesn't change like it does in its initial game. So I thought it'd just be kind of a waste of time. Also, this is the first generation to have regional forms, so I'll notate the Alolan forms when we get to that point. The playthrough started like the last one, but the only difference is that Gen 6 was actually pretty quick to get to a Pokemon Center. Gen 7, however, took forever because there was so much dialogue and so many cutscenes. From the time I started my playthrough, it took about an hour and 40 minutes just to get to the main playthrough of the game. Getting through that slog of an intro granted me the three starters, Rowlet, Litten, and Poplio. The next couple days was just getting through the story with no new Pokemon to note. The next session was just about the same, but I did get one entry, the Ultra Beast Poipol. After that, I finished the Ultra Sun campaign and called of the version exclusives required, including the Ultra Beasts and other gift Pokemon such as Cosmog. This stream granted me 15 new Pokemon and 3 Alolan forms. I actually forgot to get the Ice Stone in the previous session, so I went back to get it to evolve my Vulpix. I then started Ultra Moon, but I decided for the sake of getting through the game, I would use Pokemon that I acquired from my previous games to make them useful instead of just being used for shelf space. The Alolan Ninetales I just acquired was the only new Pokemon I got that session. The next session didn't grant anything as I was going through the story, but the next one got me through the rest of it. I then spent the rest of that session looking for Ultra Beasts that I needed, but I only got Celesteela. The next session had me going right back into the Ultra Wormhole, primarily to search for Guzzlord, which is my favorite Ultra Beast. In the middle of my search, I actually found a shiny Floatzel. I also had a raid on my stream, and as a thank you to a new subscriber, I caught a Regirock that I encountered. I was struggling to catch it, but then I had some sub luck. 
Yo, Gibbon, thank you for the subscription. Much appreciated. Oh, uh, wait, two? Three? Oh my god. <laughs> that is literally sub luck right there. Are you serious? That's wild. After nearly three hours of searching, I finally found Guzzlord, which was the last one I needed here. I then got a few more Pokemon after that, so it was six new ones altogether for this session. The hunting continued from there, and I made some pretty decent progress. I did some SOS encounters, and while most of them went smoothly, the Trumbeak and Toucanon ones took forever. I ended up with 26 new Pokemon and seven Alolan forms at the end of this session. The next day was the last one for catching Pokemon, and I also bred down everything I needed to. There were 19 new Pokemon and four Alolan forms caught that day. In the next session, I acquired the Pokemon that were no longer available by normal means anymore. Those were the two Mythicals, Marshadow and Zorora, but also the Rockruff with the own Tempo ability. So the first two were only available at GameStop through distribution events, so I was of course there for those, but mine were already sent over to Pokemon Home at this point. The own Tempo Rockruff, that one, for some reason they locked it under a Wi-Fi mystery gift rather than allowing you to get it in the game. And that's the only way that you could get Duskform Lycanroc in those games. So I had to use PK Hex unfortunately for all three of those Pokemon. But once that was done, I just finished up all the level grinding I needed to and the Alola Pokedex was finally completed for me. And I didn't know this, but I guess there wasn't a diploma for completing the Pokedex in Generation 7. It's kind of weird to me, don't you think? But anyways, there were 19 new Pokemon acquired, and there were 3 Alolan Pokemon acquired for this session. This, however, was not the end of the Generation 7 Pokedex. I still had 2 more Pokemon left to capture, but they were not in the Sun and Moon games. They were actually released with Pokemon Go on mobile devices. And I am not a fan of the freemium model or free to start or free to play whatever you want to call it it's just not a thing that i respect or agree with so i never thought that actually play pokemon go but the two pokemon that are in there it's the only way to get them they didn't get them released in any other game it's just here so i had to give pokemon go a shot and this is how it went alex hmm? it's time to go go where are we going to milos no, we're not going to meals. It's time to go. Wait, go? What do you mean? We got to film the next episode. It's time to go. Uh, go to the polls. No. Go to the polls. No, I don't want to do it. World peace. I don't want to do it. June 2016. No. no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is insane. Okay, then sponsors. If I actually had sponsors. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, they actually have literal sponsors in here. Like, yep. That's a, that's insane. Okay, uh, that's fine. Continue. Yes, we're all set. The Pokemon nearby. Okay, so we just need to basically transfer this one, though. Oh gosh, we get to pick our starter? Is yep. that a shiny? No. No. They don't do shinies in the world. Okay, uh, well, as an intellectual, we have to go with Bulbasaur. Oh, do it. Do it, do it. Uh, so it's this thing you have to do, right? Yeah, to the left, though. Like, oh. Because it actually has, like, a curve. Oh, my God. What is this? I think you get, like, an ultra... Yeah, there you go. Oh, my God. Nope. Compressed sound files and everything, too? Nope. We got it. There we got you our go. First, first capture. Which is not even part of the challenge. Nope. <laughs> well, we need it to transfer, though. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Mystery box now available. Mystery box... Okay, send Pokemon to home. Huh? Oh, gift for Linky Pokemon Go. Uh, I still have the screen recording, by the way. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, now that's getting Mel Metal. So now we officially have a Mel Metal that's claimed by me. Okay, so uh, we're out in the park and uh, we're going to be playing Pokemon Go. We're going to go over to Mystery Box. Oh, yeah, let me... we have the Mystery Box, so open it. And that should unlock Meltan for an hour. Yeah, no. Sometimes... Oh, there's a melt right Oh, there you go. Perfect. Don't mess us up. Oh, whoops. What did I just say? What did I just say? Oh my god. What did I just say? <laughs> Why is it curving so bad? Because you're not accounting for the curve. You gotta start throwing like farther to the left. 
There we go. There you go. See? <laughs> I got this. I totally played this before. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got our Meltan. So right. we're going to be adding that to the list. So now officially Gen 7 is over. All right. So that way we are going to continue into Generation 8. Once that bandage was ripped off, I uninstalled Pokemon Go right away from my phone. But next up... We are now on to Nintendo Switch and Generation 8. But before I could get into the gameplay, I needed to transfer all the Pokemon from bank to home. And while I was doing this transfer, I thought the option to choose to where they go individually meant that you just pick them one by one. It's like, oh, Bulbasaur goes in this spot, Ivysaur goes in this spot. But I guess they just drop them freely wherever they feel like. So I had to spend like an hour and a half just grabbing all the Pokemon for all the scattered boxes I had just to have them all organized and ready. But after that, I was ready to start with Sword and Shield. As per usual, I started by getting the first two starters, bringing them to home, then starting the main playthrough. I totally forgot until now that if you have the DLC, you could go to the Crown Tundra immediately and do a Dynamax adventure. So I did that and got the Suicune with my trainer ID. That way I won't need to follow any guides and just bulldoze my way through. I got through to Spikemouth's gym before I called it and I had 4 new Pokemon and 1 Galarian form acquired that day. The next day got me all the way through Sword's story since I didn't really have anything going on that day. I went straight to the Isle of Armor after that and it suggested to get the Kung Fu you're given to level 70 before completing the last trial. So I spent part of the session today going through the dens to get experience candies. I finished up the story for both DLCs, and I was thinking that since I had the Regis from the previous games, that I'd be able to go for the new ones. But it turns out you need to have the ones caught in the DLC. I finished up this session with 8 new Pokemon. Starting with Shield the next day, I was intending to go straight for Suicune like I did with Sword, but during the first go-around, I actually found a shiny Dunsparce, which is a 1 in 300 encounter. Holy oh, sh**. <laughs> What happened? Shiny Dunsparce. Ooh, nice. <laughs> I will spit up my drink. I made another attempt, but opted to look for anything. Yveltal was a legendary at the end, but I lost to it. But I did find another shiny with Dugtrio. After that, I went through once more and settled with getting Tapu Lele. I got through Kabu's gym before calling it, but no new Pokemon. The next day got me through the rest of Shield's story, and after that, I went back to the Isle of Armor. Luckily, there's no other Pokemon exclusive to the Isle of Armor that isn't the Kung Fu line. So I just took the Kung Fu and left, which was the only capture for the day as well. Crown Tundra was next, and luckily, it didn't take long at all. So I went right into going for Legendaries. Since I was playing these games on one system, I couldn't trade the Master Ball over to the other system. So I got two of the Galarian Birds on one game, and the other on the other game. For the Regis, I will need to catch the original three in each game on top of getting the new ones. I got them in Shield, but I'll need to get them now in Sword. There were five acquisitions altogether that day, two new and three Galarian. There weren't that many captures in this session, but trust me, the next one would have a lot more. I started the next day finishing up getting Regieleki and bringing everyone I had back into home so I could bring them to Shield. I started the hunt on Shield by catching Pokemon on the routes. There are some Pokemon that I realized I could find easier in the wild area or the DLC areas, so I'll probably go for those in the next session. This session, however, I caught 39 new Pokemon and 7 Galarian forms, with one of those being the dreaded Stunfisk. Get that Stunfisk off there. Since the last stream, I got sick, so I actually played without a mic or a camera, but I ended up catching nearly everything I needed in Sword and Shield, minus the Sword exclusives and Zamazenta. Getting the Galarian Weezing was really annoying though, since it would constantly do self-destruct. The only Pokemon I had in my collection with a Damp ability was Kingdra, but its level is a lot lower than Weezing, so I just ended up lobbing Ultra Balls until it was caught. Finding Galarika Twigs for my Slowbro was pretty rough as well to be honest, and I barely found enough just to get it. I then went for the Fossil Pokemon, but I forgot that half of the items are a rare find in each game. I spent thousands of watts, but I was struggling to find the fossilized dinos in particular. I ended up going to a max den in the Crown Tundra in hopes of finding an Arctozol or Arctivish, but I lucked out and found the fossilized dinos as item drops instead. I did all the level grinding, which was only for the starters, and that was almost instantly done. 
If I'm going to be candid for a moment, Gen 8 really did wonders for level grinding for the franchise by adding experience candies. I absolutely love that. I ended up catching Zamazenta by finishing up Shield, so I then went to Sword version to finish everything else there. I had to deal with finding 15 Galerica twigs again, but this time for Slowking, so there were even more I needed to get. I ended up just barely getting it. I struggled for a bit with trying to evolve Galarian Farfetch'd, but I found an easier way to get that done. After that, I went through the post-game story again to get Zacian, thus ending my playthroughs for Sword and Shield. I could not officially get Zarud, so I would have to deal with that later. There were 33 new Pokémon and 8 Galarian forms caught today. Next up, Pokémon Legends Arceus. In my daily journal for this challenge, I was writing down this game as just Legends, because Legends EA wasn't even announced just yet. And I was actually kind of excited to go back to this game, because how it circumvents what you expect from a main series Pokemon title in terms of how it progresses, and also just on how it plays in general. Also, there weren't too many new Pokemon that were introduced, and there weren't too many Hisuian forms as well, so you won't see as many acquisitions as we go through this part. As soon as I was able to, I brought my Pokemon from home, which helped my overall rank so I could use higher leveled Pokemon. There weren't any new Pokemon caught on this day though. The next day brought me through the Cobalt Coast Lens. Side note, but I totally forgot how difficult the Noble Hisuian Arcanine battle was. I got my ass handed to me a few times there. I ended up finishing up this day with catching two of the Hisuian forms. After that, I was at the Coronet Highlands. I told people on stream that I would always check the waterfall when I'm there, in case if there's a shiny Magikarp, and two minutes later, one actually showed up. Wait, what? Hold on. I heard a shiny somewhere, where is it? Oh. Oh. It's Shiny Magikarp! Ah! Nice! Yo! It's almost large too. Hey! I'm literally just saying how I was looking for one. It's here! It's here! Later on, the game required that I get to rank 5 before I could go to the Alabaster Ice Limbs. So, I did some work in the Pokedex and got there before I ended the session. Three more Hisuian Pokemon were caught that day too. The following session was the end of the main story for the game, but I then realized that there were more post-game missions that I needed to do to be able to get to Enamorous. Since my team is pretty underleveled and my rank is low, I decided to work on my rank for the rest of the stream. I ended up finding a shiny Bidoof on its own, and a shiny Bee Barrel in a mass outbreak. The only Hisuian form I got today was Braviary. I finally got through the post-game missions to get to Enamorous. The game required a completed Pokedex entry for Tornadus, Thunderous, and Lanterous, so I only caught the first two, then did the requirements for Pokedex completion. The Landorus I have from Gen 5 is already a high enough level to where its signature move, Sandseer Storm, is already mastered, so I didn't need to catch the other one in the game. Once I caught Enamorous, I finished up the massive mass outbreak requests, so I could have a chance of finding the other starters and new Pokemon without having to evolve them. In the middle of this search, I ended up finding a shiny Paris, which took a little too long to find its location. Wait, what? Hold on, hold on. Wait, what? There's a shiny somewhere. Where is it? Oh, it's this, is it this Paris? No way. No, it's not the Paris. Yeah, it is a Paris. I'm stupid, that's why. Later on, I actually finished up the rest of the Pokedex for Legends Arceus. I caught almost everything in a massive mass outbreak, but I ended up evolving the last three rather than finding them. There was one nice little surprise I found in the middle as well. Ooh, whoa. Ah, shiny Zorua, Hisuian. Let's go. So I was actually excited to play through Legends Arceus again because I only played through the main story once, but honestly, with all the things that it takes away from you when you start a new file, it's not really worth it in my opinion. That there's so many things that are just so great that you acquire on your journey that starting over again, you just feel limited. Like for example, not having the ride Pokemon to help you traverse through the areas, which I always know the most efficient way of going from point A to point B 
but not having those Pokemon to help me out really makes me feel limited. Also, not having all the Pokemon obey you is pretty rough. And not having the shiny charm too, I'm so used to seeing at least one shiny every time that I go around. But, oh well. I mean, honestly, I would just continue with my main file that I had because I had the shiny charm already. So at this point, I want to address the monkey that's on my back, or in this case, the Zerud that's on my back. Because the way that they handled the Zerud distribution at the time was so botched, to say the least. Basically, they were allowing for a mystery gift distribution for Zerud through mystery gift by email, that they would email you a password and then you'd be able to unlock it that way. And you had to be signed up to the Pokemon.com mailing list. And I had like four emails set up for that. And I didn't get a single email. My friend didn't get a single email. And there's a whole bunch of people online complaining that they didn't get it either. And so we emailed their customer service, my friend and I. And they basically just told me to go screw myself. So <laughs> uh, getting Zerud, I what I did was just found a Discord server that has a bot that'll trade over whatever Pokemon you want, and that's how I got my Zerud. I know it's cheesing it, but there's no other way of getting it at this point. I think in Pokemon Go, occasionally they'll have like a paid event where you could possibly catch a Zerud, but it's just behind a paywall and that's just not worth it. So anyways, Generation 8 is now complete. There were eight new Pokemon caught and 11 Hisuian forms acquired. All that's left now is going to be Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Here we are, the final chapter. So now I'm gonna go into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And also what was convenient is that all the DLC was released while I was making this challenge. So I don't have to make an addendum video for this or anything like that. And also I was actually pretty excited to get back into Scarlet and Violet, especially with all the DLC and everything added in there because I only played through Violet once, I still hadn't even played Scarlet yet, so this was something I was personally looking forward to. But without any further delay, let's get into it. Immediately after starting my copy of Scarlet, I found a shiny Lechonk. I played through with imported Pokemon like the past couple games, and got through to the third badge. My intent is to get all the gym badges first, so I have max obedience and then sweep the rest of the challenge. I only got two Pokemon this session though. The next three sessions had no new Pokemon acquired, but it was mainly just me going through the game. The following session got me through the Teal Mask story, which ends with a guaranteed capture of Ogre Pond. The next session didn't have anything new, but the one after that got me through the Indigo Disc. I thought I'd be able to go straight into Mochi Mayhem, but I guess you need to beat the Ace Academy tournament once, which I didn't do earlier. The prerequisite for this was to beat all the gym leaders again but by the time I finished all this, it was late, so I left it for the next day. The only capture I got that day was another guaranteed one, Terrapagos. I finished up Mochi Mayhem on the next session, but then after that, I went straight into Violet. Since I had the day off and nothing to do, I got through all of Violet's main story in one day, so the next session I do would focus on the DLC. There were also three new captures this session. The next session got me all the way through the Teal Mask again, plus the Blood Moon Ursulina quest for both games. I needed to do this because talking to Perrin in the Indigo Disc would allow me to unlock the new Paradox Pokemon. The next session was the beginning of the final hunt and I made some great progress. In about three hours, I caught nearly half the overall Pokedex. In this session, I caught 60 new Pokemon and one Paldean form. The next day was going pretty well at first, but then I felt like I needed to get the Family of Three Mouse Hold, which is a one in 100 chance when evolving Tandem Mouse. After about three hours, I finally got one. This session gave me 21 captures. The next session focused on another 1 in 100 evolution, a three segment Dedun Sparse. What I did here was get two Dedun Sparse and no Hyper Drill, breed them down, and evolve them by one level. This took another three hours, but I finally got it. After that, I did some more level evolutions. The last thing I did on this session was connect on Union Circle with my secondary switch to evolve my Finizen. There were seven captures in this session. The next session was quite a big one, as it ended up being the last one. I started this one by going for the stakes for the Treasures of Ruin. Once I caught those legendaries, I did some simple evolutions, and then went after the Gimme Ghoul coins. I got about half of them while playing casually, 
but I need 999 for Gimme Ghoul to evolve into Golden Go. Luckily, it wasn't too bad since Serebii has a map of the locations of all the Gimme Ghoul chests. After a couple of other captures, I was done with catching Pokemon in Scarlet version. I went to Violet after that and started going for all the version exclusives, which were primarily Maridon, the Paradox Pokemon, and other odds and ends. The last thing I needed to do, I brought back to Scarlet. Back in Scarlet, I got a couple of eggs from my starters, hatched them, and evolved them. Once I did that, my challenge was officially over, or so I thought at the time. There were 23 new Pokemon and one Paldean form caught at the end of this day, but I was still missing two. The Paradox Pokemon Walking Wake and Iron Leaves were only available for a limited time event in a Terra Den, aka the stupidest thing ever. So while I was doing my challenge, I wasn't able to acquire them on those files. About a month and a half after I completed my challenge, however, they re-released the dens, so I completed those as soon as I could on stream to officially complete the challenge. After seven months of constantly working on this challenge, the OG Living Dex is finally complete. And I am so happy that I was able to document the entire process and stream the entire thing too. It's personally something that I really wanted to do. It meant a lot for me. And overall, I completed 20 different Pokemon games. There were over a thousand Pokemon throughout these games that we caught. And we played a good amount of two other Pokemon games, let's say. In comparison to the last challenge that I did, this one wasn't as difficult as it was time consuming. And it was also quite gratifying too, especially when you go from generation one, where the game is just primitive, basically, to the most current games where the box system is way more streamlined and just all the changes they make throughout the franchise too. There's some things that were great, there's some things that weren't so great, just how they fixed and improved most things. Not all things, but most things over time. And my god, the box system in Gen 1 and Gen 2 were just rough. So to close out the video, I just want to say thank you so much for sticking out to the end and watching this whole thing, or just skimming to the end to hear what I have to say. I very much appreciate it. And to anybody that was watching me during the challenge at the time, Thank you as well. I mean, it was just great to have that chat and just everybody hanging out. Shout out to my friend Bono for hanging out pretty much the whole time and giving me some good advice throughout it too. Thank you to Lord Ignis for introducing me to the Living Dex community and to Bird Keeper Toby's channel because that really helped whenever I got lost. It was a really good reference point. And let me know in the comments what you thought about my challenge over here. If you've done one before, let me know or if I did something wrong, which I probably did, but just remember this is my challenge for myself, so whatever. And yeah, if you want to hang out with me on Twitch, I'm usually on there at 9 p.m. Pacific time at twitch.tv slash Shaheener. I'm currently on a break right now, but I'll probably be back on soon. I'll make an announcement when, when that happens. But until then, I will catch you in the next video. Later.